Good day everyone, this is Chris the Ancient Scholar. I just want to go ahead and explain a couple of different concepts, a little more advanced concepts. Now I have a, uh, some, some extra time to do this uh, regarding pulmonary embolism. So if you, you can imagine that this is an alveolus, and this is a capillary uh, blood supply to that alveolus, and under normal situations and circumstances, what I get is I get oxygen coming in, and oxygen diffuses across the alveolar capillary membrane and into the capillary, and we can look at blood flowing uh, this way here, of course, hemoglobin onloads oxygen, carbon dioxide is offloaded, and we have gases going uh, along their gradients. That's how we have normal oxygenation. And this concept is known as the VQ matching, or ventilation perfusion matching. And I'll just draw that right here, VQ. Uh, the normal ventilation to perfusion ratio is about 0 0.8 in normal people. Now, when we get a pulmonary embolism, so I'll just go ahead and occlude this vessel. What we get is we get dead space. Okay. So initially what happens is I have blood. Blood can no longer flow through this vessel here. Um, I'm getting, initially I'm getting uh, gases being ventilated. So I have really high ventilation and very low um, perfusion. So obviously my VQ um, ratio is going to be very large. That's initially what occurs. Um, I do not get blood going through here, so I have no exchange of gas, and I have dead space. This is what we call dead space. Okay, I have ventilation, but no perfusion. However, uh, that doesn't stop there, and most people um, are good with this, with pulmonary embolism, but what happens is <clears throat> I start to get hypoxia in here, I start to develop pulmonary infarction, and um, I'll get, you know, constriction of the vessel, obviously, um, or hypoxic um, vasoconstriction occurring. Um, and I'll also get spasm of the muscle here in the alveolus. Uh, well, obviously the alveoli, because lots will be involved. This will spasm down. And what will happen is, um, over time, as this evolves, not only will I have dead space, but I'll also have shunting. As these spasm down, uh, the alveoli collapses, I'll no longer get effective ventilation and effective perfusion. So uh, it's kind of a two-step process. Initially, when I have a pulmonary embolism, I will have dead space, classical dead space, um, that we associate with uh, pulmonary emboli uh, or embolisms. Um, however, after a certain amount of time, as this progresses and I develop pulmonary infarction, va vasoconstriction, and ultimately um, alveolar um, atelectasis uh, occurring, as these alveoli collapse, uh, my ventilation will decrease and I'll have shunting. So no, I'll have both shunting and dead space occurring, and, and, and this can be uh, create very profound um, hypoxia, a hypoxemia that leads to hypoxia that can be very difficult to treat. Um, and then, of course, this